Hello everybody, this is Eric Pistelli from Anticoa and in this video we're going to look at a PDF XTP malware. We looked at a PDF XTP malware in the previous video as well and this is probably going to be the last video on the topic. This is based on an older article I've wrote and um, it's interesting for two different reasons. I'll show you in a second. So let's open the zip file which was sent to me like that. It was password protected and the first thing is since this is being sent as a, oh, the file name is the hash, so okay, it doesn't have uh, an extension, the file. So the thing is, server assumes that this is a um, CFBF file, because, which means an office document, because it doesn't have an extension. On disk, of course, it would have an extension, and it in fact has the signature of an office file, but this is wrong. It's actually a PDF file. So what we do is we load it as a PDF file. We tell it explicitly to load it as a PDF file. This wouldn't happen, of course, uh, if we looked at the file on disk and not as a zip file uh, sent for analysis purpose. But still, it's an interesting thing. So now we have our PDF file loaded which again has an XFA form in it. We can open that directly. And it tells us, well, it reports all the JavaScript code it found. We can see that it contains code to construct a ROP chain. It sprays the heap basically, and uh, this is the actual shell code used to spray the heap. So what we do, we identify this shellcode inside of the main file. We select the start of it and we reach the end of it. Now we load it as an embedded file, but in this case we have to decode it because this is an array of words and the first step is remo removing the escape basically and this is very simple we just use a simple replace filter with the escape sequence and nothing out and now we have already removed the escape sequence then we need to convert it to hex and this is easy because we have a prepared filter for this we do from hex and now we have the hex version of it. But there's yet another step because, because it is an array of words we have to switch the endianess. So to do that we can use a custom Lua filter. I have prepared one here already so that's easy. It's actually very simple to write one but no need to do it now. So we select Lua custom Many of you may be familiar with Lua, it's a very nice programming language, especially nice to do uh, embedded scripting. And here we have already a sample. I modified this sample slightly just to do what I needed, invert these two bytes. And we can add this one too. Ah no, no not use selection. And now, now we have the correct version. As you can see, no, you cannot see it because I removed, but if I remove the filter for a moment, you can see here we have these two bytes. And if I add this again, now they are inverted. Okay, perfect. Now we have finished our filter process. And now we have the shell code here. You can see it's already being detected. But since we want to analyze it, we uh, add the carbon database to it and now we oh I pressed C to make the code and now we have code which we can analyze and it's actually very easy to analyze this code um, in fact uh, I did it uh, I could I could do it basically uh, just by looking at it. I have reversed many shell codes uh, and I can already tell you this is going to be the part which uh, gets the kernel32 base. 
uh, and then this is probably going to be the part which resolves the API and so on. So it's very easy, but if you want to do it uh, via uh, via debugger, what you do is you take this uh, shell code which we decoded and you run it with this action like we have seen in the previous video uh, with shellcode to execute table. This is very simple. I've already prepared uh, all the debug to start debugging. Oh, and make sure, of course, that you're running it in a safe environment uh, or your mom's computer. Either one is fine, to be honest. And yes, continue. Okay. Okay, and then you can just start uh, debugging. Okay, this is pointless. Here we jump. This, as I told you, is going to be probably the part which gets the kernel 32 base. And yeah, and after that, uh, we can see that this is going to be the resolution of, a, of an API. If I'm right, it will return something in, in EA, EAX, exactly load the library and so on. And you can just go on and on and on. I just I have prepared this uh, the analysis already of this file in a project. So if we look at it, oh by the way, uh, no, let me skip to that back later. Um, we go to the shell code, yes. And here is already the analysis with the comments. It's very simple. I mean, if you follow it, it what it does is just after having resolved the kernel 32, it resolves um, load library, then it loads your mon as usual, resolves your download to file, downloads this file, saves it at uh, saves it save. Oh my god, save it as a.x. Not that difficult. Apparently it is. And then executes it, and then calls when exec. Um, well, no. First, it resolves when exit, then it calls when exit on a.x, and then it just exits. That's it. I mean, it's very simple to be honest. And uh, the only uh, thing I wanted still to mention is when you're in the in the disassembly, there was a part which is in code. You can easily see that this is the call to exit process, and this is not code, so we can undefine this. Yeah. And as we can see, these are the strings. So, and that's it.